genetics. In this module, we are going to discuss about what is genetics, its importance, the history of genetics, the Krieger Mendel contribution, rediscovery of the Mendel work, why Mendel selected Garden P for his experiment, and the terminologies which are used up in the genetics. So let's get started. What is genetics? Genetics is the study of how the genes bring about characteristics or traits in the living things and how those characteristics are inherited. These traits are described by the genetic information which are carried by a molecule called DNA. Genetics is the science which tries to explain what is the reason why these living things they resemble their parents and yet they differ from them. So, genetics is the study of heredity and variation of the inherited characteristics. To know genetics in detail, we should be aware about what the heredity and variation means. Firstly, heredity. Heredity is also known as inheritance or biological inheritance. It is the passing on of traits from the parents to their offsprings. This heredity, it has no influence on evolution and is not responsible for the diversity within the population. For example, the flat feet, the color of the flower, the seed type and genetic disease. These are the few examples of heredity which we see are passed on from the parents to their offsprings. Second is variation. Variation is the difference between the young ones of the same parents or the difference between various individuals belonging to one species. Variation is responsible for the diversity within the population and it leads to the evolution by introducing new phenotypic characters to the species. For example, the color of the eye, skin, hair, the dimples which we see on the face, that is the due to variation which we see which are passed on within the species. Here I have taken an example of heredity and variation, how it is passed on from the parents to their offsprings of a Hindi film industry and of a Malayalam film industry, how the heredity and variation is passed on from the father into the son. Importance of genetics. Genetics will be important not only to understand the cause of disease, but also to recognize the manner in which an individual responds to a particular therapies. Genetics also deals with the structure of the molecule and how these genes they function. The gene behavior in the contact of the cells or the organism or the pattern of the inheritance and how these genes are distributed. This genetics also deals with the variation and the change which occurs within a population. History of genetics. The word genetics is derived from an ancient Greek word, genesis, which means origin. The word genetics, it was coined by an English biologist, William Batson in the year 1905. He was one of the discoverers of the Mendel's work and he became a champion of Mendel's principles of inheritance. But the Grieger Mendel was the person who worked on the discovery of the basic principles of genetics. In 1866, he was the first person to shed light on the way in which these characteristics are passed down from generation to generation. Due to the tremendous work of the Gregor Mendel in the field of genetics, he is also known as father of genetics. Now let's discuss about the Mendel and his history of genetics. Gregor Mendel was born in a German-speaking family on 20th July 1822. He was a monk and he used to taught natural sciences in the monastery school in Brunn, Austria. He presented the data and conclusions about the genetics in his paper 
experiments in plant hybridization in 1865. For his experiment, he selected garden pea. The reason of the selection was that numerous varieties of the garden peas with many different traits were available. Due to his tremendous work, he is also known as father of genetics and his work was rediscovered in the year 1902. Now we will discuss about the rediscovery of the Mendel's work. In 1900, three botanists, Karl Korens from Germany, Hugo de Reis from Netherlands and E. V. Sma in Austria rediscovered Mendelian principles independently. After the rediscovery, the Mendel's work was named as Mendelism or Mendelian Laws of Inheritance. Why? What was the reason behind why the Mendel chose the garden pea for his experiment? I am going to give the answer in a pointwise manner. So the first point why he chose the garden pea was many varieties were available having a contrasting characters. Second, the varieties which were available, they were in pure form as they were produced the same type generation after generation. Third, the peas are normally self-pollinated. The reason of the self-pollination is its flowers are bisexual. Fourth, the self-pollination could be presented by removing the corresponding reproductive parts of the flower. Fifth, the cross-pollination is it possible by artificial method also because the flower size is very convenient. And lastly, the reproductive span of a pea plant is very small. And due to this, the two crops can be produced within one year. So these were some of the reasons why the mineral chose the garden pea for his experiment for the genetics. Terminologies used in genetics. To understand the mechanism of transmission of characters from generation to generation, we must understand the terminology used in genetics. So we are going to discuss about these terminologies one by one, what exactly they mean. First, Gene. Gene was introduced by Johansson in the year 1909 and the term gene was given by him. Before that the genes were termed as factors. The factors was the term which was introduced by Mendel during his work. The group of base pairs in the DNA molecules which determine one or more hereditary characters is termed as gene. Gene is the basic physical and functional unit of heredity. These genes, they are made of DNA. Some genes, they act as instructions to make molecules called proteins. In humans, these genes, they vary in size from few hundred DNA bases to more than two million bases. If we talk about the gene, that in what manner they are passed on, we are able to see from the parent to the offspring, for examples like the color of the skin, hair or eye. These are due to the transfer of the gene from the parent to the offspring. The second is allele. Allele is the specific gene that comes either from the male parent or from the female parent. These alleles, they refer to each of the members of the gene pair. They are the variant form of a gene. These alleles are responsible for diverse features of a given trait. An individual contains a pair of alleles for a particular gene which may be homozygous, heterozygous, dominant or recessive. For example, what we see the color of the eye is there that is of black color, brown color, blue color or green color. This color of the change of the eye is due to the allele which is transferred from the parents to the offsprings. These alleles are present in two form. One is dominant allele and the second is recessive allele. Let's discuss what is the main difference between these two types of alleles. A dominant allele is expressed even if it is going to be paired with a recessive allele. But 
a recessive allele is only visible when it is going to be paired with another recessive allele. This is the main difference between a dominant and a recessive allele. Now let's discuss about the homozygous, heterozygous and hemizygous condition. The homozygous and heterozygous. These two terms were introduced by Batson and Saunders in the year 1902. So let's discuss about them individually. First, homozygous. When both the members of an allelic pair are alike, which means they both are same, then that condition is termed as homozygous condition. As we can see here, the two strands, they are having the same allele as capital A, capital A. So this is a homozygous condition. Second is heterozygous. If two members of an allelic pair, they are unlike, which means they are not same, they are different, then the individual is said to be a heterozygous. For example, as shown here, capital B and small b, they, both the alleles are different. So, the, here the individual is a heterozygous. The third one is Hemizygous. Hemizygous is the condition in which only one copy of a gene or DNA sequence is present. As seen here also, only one copy is present as C. These hemizygous conditions, they are usually observed in a male individual. Next comes the genotype and phenotype. The term genotype and phenotype, it was introduced by W. L. Johansson in the year 1909. A genotype, it is a genetic makeup, while a phenotype, it is a physical trait and is a result of a genotype. Genotype, it refers to a genetic constitution, while phenotype, it refers to an external appearance. As shown in the picture also, it is a cross between a purple flower and a white flower of a plant. In F2 generation of a plant, it can be classified either according to their genetic composition or according to their appearances. Here in this cross, the letter capital B and small b, they represent the alleles for color and the picture shows the resultant flowers. Here the cross has been done between two heterozygous parents where the capital B, it represents the dominant allele that is of purple color and the small b, it represents the recessive allele which is of white color. Then if we talk about the phenotypic and genotypic ratio, here the phenotypic ratio is in the ratio of 3 is to 1 reason because we are getting here 3 purple color flowers and 1 white color flower. So it is in the ratio of 3 is to 1. In comparison to it, the genotypic ratio is in the ratio of 1 is to 2 is to 1. As we can see here, we are getting 1 capital B, capital B here and 2 strands of capital B, small b, capital B, small b and 1 of small b, small b. So it's a ratio of 1 is to 2 is to 1. Next is monohybrid dihybrid and trihybrid cross. So let's discuss what exactly they mean. Firstly is monohybrid cross. A cross or a breeding which is done between two individuals having one pair of the contrasting traits and producing all hybrid generations for that character is termed as monohybrid cross as shown in the picture also. Here a single pair of gene is involved and one character is considered and that one character is going to be studied properly. The predicted phenotypic ratio in the monohybrid cross is 3 is to 1. Next is your dihybrid cross. A cross which is done between two individuals having one, two pairs of contrasting traits and producing a generation in which all individuals are heterogeneous for both the characters. It is termed as dihybrid cross. As shown in the picture also, here the cross has been done between a pure yellow round seeds and green wrinkled seeds. 
the pure yellow round seeds is denoted by capital Y capital Y and capital R capital R whereas the green wrinkle seeds are denoted by small y small y small r small r when they are crossed in the f1 generation the phenotype which we are getting is in the ratio of capital y small y capital r small r and the ratio of the phenotypic we are getting is here 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 in a mon in a dihybrid cross the two individual characters are considered and they are studied the two pairs of the genes are involved here the next is trihybrid cross it's a cross which involves three pairs of the contrasting characters that are independently heritable in a trihybrid cross the ratio which we are going to be getting is in the ratio of 27 is to 9 is to 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 and it shows the same pattern as a dihybrid next comes the test cross and the back cross a test cross is a type of a cross in which the f1 progeny is crossed with its double recessive parents a truss cross is used to determine whether the individual existing dominant characters are homozygous or heterozygous in comparison to the test cross the back cross is the cross of f1 offspring with one of its parents and if in back cross if f1 is going to be crossed with a recessive parent the individuals with both phenotype type will appear in equal proportion whereas if in back cross f1 is going to be crossed with a dominant parent then all the progenies of f2 will be in the dominant manner next is f1 and f2 generation f1 and f2 generation means f1 means your first filial generation and f2 means second filial generation here the filial means son so the f1 generation is a generation of the hybrids produced from a cross between the genetically different individuals which is called as parents and f2 that is second filial generation is the generation of individuals which arrives as a result of inbreeding of interbreeding amongst the individuals of f1 generation your f1 generation here one parent is homozygous dominant for both the traits while second is homozygous recessive and in comparison to it in f2 the parents are heterozygous for both the traits now i have shared a slide with you all some of the questions are shared to test whatever is discussed with you about the genetics how much you all have understood so test yourself